Be inspired with the special message from Bishop Macedo. Hello, my friends. A very good dawn, a very good morning to all those who are connected with us here in this live. May the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Eternal God, may God Himself in Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ in Spirit, and the Father of our Lord Jesus in Spirit, the God Father, may He be with you right now to open your understanding, to give you knowledge and wisdom, to reveal the living God, who He is, the only and true God. When Jesus speaks that whoever is not born again cannot see the kingdom of God, and much less those who are not born of the water and the Holy Spirit, that they cannot enter the kingdom of God. He summarizes these two words, these two thoughts, into one thought only, in order for you to understand the greatness of what it means to receive the Holy Spirit. He says like this, He who is born of the flesh is flesh, meaning all of us human beings, we were born of the flesh, except the Lord Jesus, who was born of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon Mary, and placed in her the seed, the divine seed, and that's when the Son of God was born, the Lord Jesus Christ. But concerning every other human being who were born, who are born, and who will be born, they are born of the flesh, of the union of the mother with the father, the father with the mother. So he's born of the flesh, and his flesh, meaning whoever is born of the flesh has the fleshly nature. They have the nature of Adam, the Adamic nature, the nature that is fleshly, that means it's physical and material or materialistic. So, when a person is fleshly, so they don't have the spiritual vision. They don't know what it means, the spiritual world. They don't understand God, because God is a spirit. How can a person who is flesh understand the things of the spirit, the spirit of God? God is a spirit. And human beings, in order to have contact and communion with the Spirit of God, the least, at least, they have to be spirit, because if they are flesh, if they are born of the mother and the father only, they won't have access to the Spirit of God. They won't know God. So Jesus said, whoever is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is a spirit. Adam was not born of the flesh. Adam and Eve were born of God. God formed them, but they were not born of the Spirit of God. God formed them, God created heaven and earth, and He also created Adam and Eve. But Adam and Eve were not born of God. I don't know if you understand me. They were made by God, 
just as the angels in heaven were made by God. The angels were not born of God. They were created by God to be his messengers. Adam and Eve were then created by God as he created heaven and earth and the seas and the animals. As he created everything else, he created Adam and Eve. But when the Lord Jesus came into this world, he was generated, he was born of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit came upon the Virgin Mary and placed the seed, a divine seed inside of her, and then the Son of God was born. Yes, Jesus was the only one born of God. And from the Lord Jesus, from the Lord Jesus, then came the Holy Spirit afterwards, when Jesus sat at the side of the Father, he died and resurrected and went to the Father, then he sent the Holy Spirit. Nowadays, the Holy Spirit generates children for God. He gives birth to children of God. I was given birth by the Holy Spirit. I was given birth by the Holy Spirit. One day, He generated me. He made me be born of Him. So I stopped being flesh. My origin, my nature stopped being flesh to become spirit. And this has been happening since the day the Holy Spirit came for the very first time in the day of Pentecost. So, when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, when He came upon those 120 people who were there in the cenacle, those 120 people were generated, given birth by the Holy Spirit. And from then on, the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ is started. So, the Church of the Lord Jesus is formed of children of God, generated, given birth by the Holy Spirit Himself. So, the Church of the Lord Jesus doesn't have a denomination, a name. It is the body of the Lord Jesus. So, when the person receives the Holy Spirit, they are formed by the Holy Spirit. And that's why they are new creatures. They are no longer flesh. They are no longer subjected or limited to this world, to this cruel, filth world. Even though we live in the world, but we are not limited by the world anymore. Because then, when we are generated by the Holy Spirit, when we are born of the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit comes upon us and He makes us be born again, then we stop carrying that human nature, the physical nature, the materialistic nature, in order to have a spiritual nature. The Apostle Paul teaches that. He, he says that exactly in a simple way. He says the first man, Adam, became a living being. But the last Adam, which is Jesus, referring to the Lord Jesus, when he came, he became a life-giving spirit. And that's what has to happen with you, with every human being. You have to be spirit. If you are living being, you can even belong to a denomination, to a church, uh, the Universal Church, you can be a pastor, an assistant, you can be a bishop, a female bishop, you can be whoever you want to be inside of a church, a physical church. But if you are not born of the Holy Spirit, then you are still a living being. And therefore, you do not have what it takes to overcome your flesh. 
you can't overcome your flesh to overcome sin. You don't have what it takes to defeat the devil to overcome the world because you are still carrying the Adamic nature, the first nature of Adam and Eve, the physical nature. And then you are still a living being. But when the Holy Spirit comes down upon us, then He make us become a spirit, life-giving spirit, spirits that give life, that passes life, that transfers life to those who are dead in their sins. So when Jesus said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, is flesh. As long as they are flesh, they are subjected to sin, to addictions, they are subjected to the filth of the world and, and to be a goat that will be on the left of God and will be then destroyed. But when the person is born of the Holy Spirit, they are spirit. They carry within themselves the nature of God because they are children of God, then they are children of God, children of God. They carry the image and likeness of God Most High because they are spirit, they are life-giving spirit. I don't know if you are understanding me, obviously, if you are born of the spirit, you are understanding perfectly what I'm saying. If you are not born of the spirit, that means you did not receive the Holy Spirit yet, the Holy Spirit hasn't come upon you yet, you are probably confused. But don't, don't worry. You place your faith, your focus in receiving the Holy Spirit and you will understand everything that I'm saying and a lot more. You see, for example, when a person reads the Bible, when they read the Bible, they, if they are living beings, they don't understand the biblical language because it's a spiritual language, it's a divine language, it's the divine language. For example, you who were born of the Holy Spirit, when you read the Bible, you understand God's language. The Holy Spirit enlightens your eyes and makes you understand what is written. He reveals to you the Holy Scriptures because then you speak the language of God because only the Holy Spirit gives us the language of the Almighty. Sometimes the person wants to receive the Holy Spirit to speak in tongues and the Holy Spirit doesn't come for that. The Holy Spirit comes to give us a divine nature. In other words, He comes to make us stop being living beings to be, to become life-giving spirit. Of course, obviously, those who are life-giving spirit, they understand those who are living beings because they were once life-living beings. But those who are living beings hardly ever understand those who are life-giving spirit. That's why there are so many conflicts and, and hatred towards the Christian faith in this world. And that's why Christians are persecuted. The Christians who are born of God, they are persecuted, they are slandered, they are spoken ill of, they are called thieves like myself, the chief of the thieves in this world. I'm the chief of the thieves of souls, no doubt about that. However, they don't understand us because they are living beings. They are living in a level in the limits of the flesh. And those who are flesh cannot understand those who are spirit. That's the truth. Jesus is saying those who are born of the spirit is the spirit. And that's why, my dear friend, we are strengthening the idea of the person receiving the Holy Spirit because only the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit, is capable of making us be born again and become life-giving spirit with the same nature that our Lord and Savior Jesus had. Thank God.
And that's when the person becomes a child of God. Therefore, that foolish talk to deceive everyone, that everybody is a child of God, that's for everyone to be comforted and say, I'm also a child of God. No, you're not. Children of God are those who are born of God. Born of God. In order for you to be a child of God, you have to be born of the Holy Spirit. It's not because you belong to church A, B, C, or even the universal church that you are necessarily a child of God. No. In order to be born of God, you have to be born of the Holy Spirit, not of the church or denomination or the pastor A, B, C, or bishop or whoever. You have to be born of the Holy Spirit. If you are not born of the Holy Spirit, you will continue being who you are since you were born, unfortunately. But when you receive the Holy Spirit, uh, then you, you, you know what it is to be a child of God, what it is to be a child of the Almighty, and then you'll be able to come before God and say, Our Father who is in heaven. Hallelujah. This is a privilege only for those who are born of the water and of the Holy Spirit. May God bless you all and see you tomorrow in Jesus' name in the continuation of the fast of Daniel. God bless. Amen.